Do you have announcements to make or anything? No. I will, like, at the very end. But okay. Well, let's get started with the open session. We only have about a half hour, I think, yeah. so we can turn you loose for lunch and um, see what's going on. Um, so we looked at this, and there were some questions, lingering questions, some left over. And I, just, I was going to jump into a couple of these really quickly to address them the best I can. If there are other people out there that want to address them, I'll hand you the mic. And I, I like this, this, this question, um, and it's been something we've been trying to do about the digital commons resources online. Um, we have this really great thing at all the campuses where you can go in and you can do this stuff and be supported, but we also have about 23,000 online enrollments via the World Campus. And so we've been looking at tools that support people via a browser-based interface for video editing. And something that Chris, Malay, and, and the team have come up with, um, and we're beginning to look at this, is this thing called Kaltura. And I'm not going to steal Hannah's thunder because she's going to do a much better job of this. But basically what this is, is this is a standard video that was produced yesterday on fr Monday in the digital media workshop. And so if those of you who were here saw this stuff, it's pretty crazy. But I can edit this right in the browser. So if I hit this, it actually loads up what looks like essentially iMovie. And I can do video production via the browser. What's interesting about this is not only can I do my own stuff here, but I can search Creative Commons uh, repositories, pull in music, drop them in as tracks. It does transitions, um, full-on video editing in the browser. So this is the timeline that you would have typically with iMovie, right? The only difference is, is you're pulling clips from your, your clip place up there and you're doing it all online completely. And then it'll save and store back to the server and then you can share it out. And then you can either allow people to remix it again. So you could say, I want to let people remix this and they could add their own stuff to it. Or you can share it, embed it on a web page, on a blog or whatever. So this is something that we've been working on for a little while now. The, I, the ITS streaming server, which is at streaming.psu.edu, is a QuickTime streaming server. And the direction that we're pr proposing to move in is that you will m use the blogs at Penn State. You'd go into your dashboard and you'd click video upload. And essentially what would happen is you'd end up with a YouTube-like thing that goes on where FFmpeg happens in the background, automatically converts it, potentially drops your file right into your pass space, and then you could manipulate it using Kaltura. So to address the needs of students at a distance, what we think we can do is offer um, browser-based video editing. And, and I know Hannah's going to talk a little bit more about it. I don't want to say too much because I don't really know any more about it. Um, but this is, this is the direction that that's going. Not only is this here, but some of the other resources like um, um, uh, sample projects and rubrics and things are available at the Digital Commons website for use as well. But, so that's browser-based editing. How do I get out of that, Chris? Like that. OK. So that one's, that's that one. Blogs at Penn State and open sharing. Um, the last session was awesome, I thought. That, that was just incredible. And I saw dozens and dozens of tweets going around that was sort of saying, so what can we do here at Penn State? Well, we have a couple of examples. We had mentioned the Biology 12 course, but I wanted to show something that was produced about two years ago using the Blogs at Penn State platform. So, this is an IST piece, an uh, IST topic IS, from IST 110, and it's content that used to be delivered via Angel, right? And it's been moved into the blogs of Penn State. This is just a standard blog, um, as you can see. Here it is, and here are the lessons and all these kinds of things. Each lesson was authored as a page of content or a post, a post of content, a separate post. And what's interesting about this is that this, we call it a master course, and what that means is, so this would sit in a central repository like courses.tlt.psu.edu or something. And then if I'm teaching this course, or if I want to make this course available, I can add a widget to my sidebar that literally links to the XML download of this entire course. So clicking that brings up this thing, and I don't know what I'd open that with, but all it is is a single text file. You would take that text file, and you would go into your own blogs at Penn State dashboard, upload it, and you've essentially recreated the entire course. And then you could customize it, style it, do whatever you want to to it, save it in your own, your own personal web space, and add whatever content you wanted to the course. It doesn't manipulate the original course back here that maybe was agreed upon by a group of designers or something. Why does sub you ever celebrate then regret it the next day? I can, I can answer that. I can answer that. But that's, that's essentially an easy way to use the, uh, the blogs platform to do, to do courseware sharing. It's funny, I showed that off at e-education council like two and a half years ago, and people looked at me like I had like six heads. Sort of like the way some of you are looking at me right now. 
So should we address the why does Chris Stubbs always over celebrate them and regret it the next day? <laughs> it does have them. <laughs> How do we let Stubb address that? Um, yeah, so what, what, what else do you got there? Uh, there's another question at the top about, um, aside from events like this, uh, how can we take advantage of the community during the rest of the year? Um, one of the things that we've decided to do is kind of a strategic direction is we have the um, annual Teaching and Learning with Technology Symposium in the spring. Uh, Jeff, where are you there? Do you have the date for next year, March 27th? Okay, is that your birthday, Cole? It's the day before my birthday. Okay, so it's always around Cole's birthday because it's like a national holiday for us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, he always enjoys that, like, you know, having all these responsibilities, and it's like his big culmination right around his birthday. His wife and kids like that, too. Yeah, yeah, well, that's, uh, anyway. Um, uh, can we make the announcement of who we have coming in? Yeah, I think it's uh, more than fair game. The contract's been signed. And okay, so this year we have Michael Wesch coming. Uh, which is going to be a huge deal. I've seen him present before. He's a fantastic Lessig-like uh, presenter. If you want, yeah, okay, better than Lessig. If you've seen Lawrence Lessig present before, um, you know he's great. Michael Wesch does the same kind of rapid fire thing, but it's really, really interesting stuff. Uh, he runs the uh, digital ethnography uh, project out of Kansas State, and his is the uh, the videos that I mentioned online. Um, but I think that's a good example because he doesn't have a, a, a great set of resources, but he's in incorporating everything that we're talking about during this conference, the kind of open educational resources, uh, getting his students to create projects through something like our digital commons, um, just releasing everything in the open and really making a name for himself. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is, is that I'm working to bring him in Thursday night, which would mean we would have him all day Friday. And Basically, what I'm offering is an open invitation to start thinking about what you'd like to have us do with Michael while he's here. So last year when we had David Wiley, we put together meetings with different people on campus. Um, he spent time with certain, some instructional designers. I'd like to do the same thing with Michael Wesch. And if you, if you write his name down, or, or I guess you probably have a computer in front of you, some of you, and you could um, Google him and find out what he's all about, what he does. He just gave a talk recently that was just mind-blowing. And I think you ought to take a look at that. And then think about the kinds of ways that it could impact your initiatives here at University Park. Um, and I will offer, if there are folks at campuses who would like to come up and spend that time with them as well, um, just send me an email and we'll, we'll work that out as well. But if there are things that you want to be able to do and think about with Wesh, please, we're, we're, we're paying for him to come here. He's a wonderful guy. And I know he'd be more than happy to spend, spend time with you. So, um, so uh, again, with the strategic you know, plan here, what we're trying to do is make the TLT Symposium not just one event, but a series of events, uh, and put other things under the, the, um, that umbrella. So the Alan Levine visit that was in Foster Auditorium was you know, another event that we um, announced to, uh, to people like yourself, and we'd invite you to come and, and have kind of these open discussions. Learning Design Summer Camp, uh, we're planning a uh, digital commons tailgate for the fall that'll be in one of the um, Western campuses, Chris, probably? Mon Alto? Okay. Uh, so we're trying to, you know, get out to where people are. Um, we're trying to discuss topics that are interested, uh, interesting to everybody. We, if you have other ideas of people that you'd like to bring in, uh, you know, please let us know. Um, but we also have the uh, Learning Design Community Hub. We have, uh, you know, the, our Twitter feed. Our TLT website has actually been massively redesigned by uh, Audrey there. Audrey? Did you, Put up your little hand. Okay, thank you. <laughs> She's so shy. <laughs> um, but it's a really great site. We have a lot of, uh, like the, the, the coffee reads, the daily buzz that uh, Jamie Oberdick does um, every day. Thank you, Jamie. Um, those are awesome. We have all the videos that we're producing. So we're really trying to get everything that we're doing out in the open. Uh, and a lot of the videos, in fact, are on our TLT um, YouTube channel. And you can embed them wherever you want if they're, uh, if they're useful. But we're trying to make this a year-round event so, um, so people can get this stuff uh, throughout the year. You know, let's mention the fact that we're, we're working on this section of the site right now. So under the About, there's this thing called Connecting with TLT that will give you information about what each of the different kinds of news items, pieces that we have, what we're offering, and all those kinds of things, um, how to stay connected, Google Reader, those kinds of things, um, where we are across the social web um, on TLT, on, on Twitter, 
You mentioned Flickr, we mentioned YouTube. So we have all these different channels where we're producing content and putting it out there. And if you want to know how to connect all those things, you can come right to the website. I don't have an answer to the ID Community Hub. Um, I think it's something that, that we have to continue to work on, but that has to be an open sort of invitation. Yeah, I, one thing I want to say about that is there's a lot of resources on the Community Hub, but it's not working in terms of getting us to talk to each other. People are posting, you know, hey, this thing's happening and that's it. So there's something not right with it, and we need to, as a community, we need to figure that out. Uh, and maybe one of the possible venues that we can use to do that, and something that we haven't mentioned yet, is what we're calling the All ID Meeting, and I've run that for a couple of years now. It's the first Friday of every month. It's usually at 10 o'clock. Uh, those of you that are on campus here are welcome to come join us. It's usually down in 202 K Rider, but we also do it through Adobe Connect, and we've reached we've well reached the point where there's more people coming in through Adobe Connect than there are face to face. So. Probably, I'm thinking one of the next sessions we should do is maybe this is an issue we should try to tackle is how can we as a community start to get together and, and you know, the thread that binds the bones between these face-to-face -face events, what can we do to keep that going? Yeah, the other thing I'll say about that is you don't have to be an instructional designer because most of us in this room are not. Um, this is the learning design uh, um, summer camp because all of us touch the design of teaching and learning. If you're just a programmer, if you're a Flash developer, if you're um, one of our marketing people, I mean, you're still affecting teaching and learning and getting the word out and thinking about the same issues. So um, it's important for all of us. Do people have thoughts about how they can, how to beef up the community as well? So, you know, this is the part where I'd like for you to say something. Um, just, just throwing it out there. Um, are there, are, do you guys have, I mean, are there things that we could be, be doing better, I think is the big question. And, and I know that that may not be a question that can be answered now, but we need help with this as well. I mean, I think a lot of the things that we're trying to do are geared around the idea of, of answering the question of we don't know what's going on, we don't know what's happening, we don't know what's coming down the pike, and I don't know how else to, to share that information. And so any ideas that you have for me or for us or Alan or any one of us in this room, you have to understand that our ears are wide open and we're trying to figure out what the best channels are. And it may look like we're overwhelming people a lot of times because we have so many channels, but we're testing them out. This is all uncharted waters for us. So um, know that we welcome any sort of ideas or feedback or anything at all related to that. Okay, let's move on to something else then. Go big or go home. Well, I don't know. People have other, other thoughts. Anything else you want us to follow up on? Come on. Come on. Oh. Your M and M and M fourteen. Then what is the? Uh, when you go to the, um, you just have a page from the live So this is an overview, essentially. This is an overview of what the team has done with the blog platform. And is there a link? Is this it right here? Right there. So again, this is, um, this is a course being designed in the blogs at Penn State. This is essentially just the professional template, right? I mean, I don't think we've done, maybe done a couple of little things to, to it, but may, maybe not even, Brad. It has the lessons listed on the side, which is in essence, it's got lessons. Yeah. And we've added a light box, so when you click, you get like this nice little thing that shows the videos. Where's Tyrone? You may have heard of CCD. If not, it stands for Colony Collapse Disorder, and it relates to the die-off of honeybee colonies. In the U.S. alone, almost half... So you can picture, but each one of...
Matt, how are these done? Are these each posts, blog posts, or are these pages? No, they're each uh, pages. Each pages. And what's interesting is because it's sort of an open platform, the thing that uh, Matt and the team did to collect feedback during the alpha stage of this is they actually embedded a Google form. So as students went through the content itself, they were actually able to provide feedback. And I think you guys collected quite a bit of really good, good feedback on, on how yeah, the course was put yeah, together. Yeah. Just pull the code out. Um, so this is another example of um, we do have this platform sitting there, and I think that there's a lot of people that look at it and say, "Oh, blogs are just blogs," um, but they're really they're really open publishing platforms. Last week I went and visited with Brad Six Apart, and they're in, they're in San Francisco, and we spent some time talking about what this is all about. Um, Carla talked about the ePortfolio initiative yesterday. Um, that's built on the blogs. We were able to, I don't know, I guess I'll, we'll just go ahead and say it. Um, we're working with Six Apart to give all graduating students free TypePad accounts for life. So what that means is if they build their ePortfolios in the blogs at Penn State, we would construct a middleware piece that they could a one click and move their entire ePortfolio into their own personal domain and it wouldn't cost them anything. And they'd be able to keep that and they'd continue to edit and do what they want to do with it. So that's a pretty interesting, pretty interesting concept, right? Marty, because you guys do, you've struggled with that idea, right? Students come through, they graduate, and then they say, I want to, we kill their web space six months after they graduate. Yeah, it's, it's really not even six months. It's just like when the guy gets, he comes into work and flips a switch, you know? Um, and so this would allow people to continue down that path. Carla's students, she had 50 students in her teacher ed program. 48 of them were, are demanding to keep their e-portfolio, 48 out of 50, because it's transformative to them as they go out and try to get their jobs, right? And up until now, we've been writing these migration documents, and you've got to download all your images and then go to WordPress.com and upload this stuff, and it doesn't work. So we're working closely with Six Apart now to make that happen. And um, I can't say when that will be in place, but I'm guessing by the next time we have students graduating, so next de December is what, 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 the, what the goal is. It won't be ready for summer, but it will be ready for the fall. So if you're on the fence about ePortfolios with some of your faculty and things like that, know that we're moving towards that. Yes, yeah, Stuart. Yeah. So Stuart asked if, if we see, if I see, I guess, was the question, if I see the blogs as becoming a dominant platform for teaching and learning. Um, so I would certainly hope so. I mean, that's, that's my, where I stand on this whole thing is more towards we should use open, centrally supported platforms that interoperate with other platforms, and this does. You can move content in and out of this. XML is a pretty standard format. Um, there was talk about killing Angel and moving away from it. I even saw tweets about it and everything. And right now, there really isn't a plan to do that, right? I mean, we know that Blackboard bought Angel, and I think we have a session on this, right? The 800-pound gorilla in the room. Well, that was uh, just dinner discussion. Dinner discussion. Um, and we know Blackboard bought them. We know that Blackboard charges quite a bit for licensing, so I think you can safely assume that that's probably not going to be an option for the institution. But we are assembling committees right now. Um, there are people in this room that are on those committees to start to really systematically evaluate where we should be. But I would say that we are at least a good three years away from having to make any sort of decision. Um, but I do know that, I mean, I went through the World Campus thing when everything was in WebCT and the transition into Angel was, was painful, and it's, it's difficult. Um, we went through it at IST. We, had it, we licensed our own version of WebCT, and then all of a sudden we realized, oh, crap, the university's going to Angel. Now we've got to get all of our stuff out, and it's very difficult. So we're working to try to build templates that look a lot more like e-learning courses so you don't have to run your own systems. I mean, the stuff that the e-learning institute and, and arts and architecture have built with Drupal and Elms is brilliant stuff. And what we want to make sure we do, and Keith sort of touched on it, is have that interoperability there. So designers can use the structured tools that they've built if they choose to run that architecture and move it into the blogs of Penn State, or even design in the blogs of Penn State and move it up into Elms when it's time to do some real authoring. So I think we have options that are going to happen, um, and I think that we're going to see some things that are going to be released this year, Google and the Google Wave application. If you still have your buzzword bingo thing out there. Um, We'll make collaborative authoring of content, so working in partnerships with faculty and staff will be a lot easier within this environment. We, again, we can host that ourselves. It's an open source solution. We can integrate it with our own Penn State authentication. I'm not saying we will. I'm just saying we can. 
And um, that, that'll make things different. So it's going to require us all to rethink some of our design processes as well in development. Yeah, Vicki. And then I'll come back, Stevie. I'm sorry. I will. So for those of you who didn't hear those on the wire, um, we are working with IMS. It's an it's a international standards organization. We have people, TK, Lee, and um, Brad Koslick and, and Vicky, they're working on different projects with an IMS. These folks are specifically working on a portfolio standard so that we could take portfolio content and easily, without any effort, move it into a department or a program assessment engine so that programs can do systematic assessment and credit for accreditation purposes. Vicky's working, it's called the Common Cartridge, which would allow publishers and other people to build standard cartridges that could plug into learning management systems that were IMS compatible. So that, that's happening as well. That's a good point. CV? My question is uh, on the back of the uh, slide. I like the idea of having this Um, yeah, there is. So the way the blogs of Penn State work is that ITS runs this in their, you know, in the data center essentially. So it's on heavy duty machines. So it's, it is, it's scalable at that level. I mean, when we do this, it's for 150,000 users we think it can hold up to. We're at 10,000 um, users of the blog platform. Um, our license is for 40,000, but we can just up that if we need to. We already are publishing in departmental web space. So if you, have, to, if you need, have needs for that, we're doing it manually right now. And I don't want to open the floodgates on this because manually it means you send an email to Brad. <laughs> and then he comes into my office and said, did you promise somebody else another goddamn department on web space plug? But I can't tell you the number. That is our number one request right now, Stevie. So like this course that Matt's building will be at courses.tlt.psu.edu slash biology. And then that master course, that download, all the graphics and images will be stored centrally there. So you could take that and you wouldn't have to worry about rehosting the images and things like that. So already we can do that because, so departmental web space is all part of the same infrastructure that supports personal web space. Club web space is part of the same infrastructure. And so we're working with student affairs to allow clubs to use the blogs of Penn State as their interface to that as well. So the direction, you hit it right on the head, is the direction is that this will be a lightweight, thin content management system that anybody can take advantage of to do literally any web publishing task whatsoever. And it's really only limited to the kinds of templates that either you can build or we can build with you. Because it's a completely open architecture, it's completely extensible. And in our visit with Six Apart, they showed us some things that are pr that's gonna be pretty amazing. Um, adding social features to blogs so you can follow people, um, live streaming in content from other web services, um, just some really wild stuff, really wild stuff that I think will impress a lot of people in the, in the coming year. So I'll also add that, you know, talking about PSU Voices and the impact of how we tag all the content that we've done in this module piece, we can now be found through that. Yeah, and that's something we didn't, we haven't touched on at all. It's a good point. Do people know about the blog? Oh, so I shouldn't show it. Well, you can. I don't know if repeat everything you said. <laughs> I won't even, I won't show you the magic, I'll leave it, leave it for Brad, but I'll give you a hint, maybe you can look at this ahead of time. If you go to blogs.psu.edu and click on the blog search, what Matt's talking about is both the tag aggregation and the search. So this searches across the entire system. And where this came from, the idea for this was what Twitter has done, right? So what Twitter is doing is Twitter now, because we're all sitting here writing all this great stuff, right? So they feel like they have an ocean of data running underneath Twitter. And Twitter is essentially a prediction engine. So you can go there and look at the trending topics and find out what you're going to read about in the newspaper tomorrow. That's what's so awesome about Twitter search. But what they can do is they can mine that data and produce results for you much quicker than even Google can because they're mining it every second, right? They're constantly indexing that Twitter stream. We wanted to do something similar here. So, for example, in TLT, we use the tag PSU TLT travel training for our travel and training reports. If you type that tag in there, you get every single blog post that's ever been written that uses that tag. And then as Brad will show you, the way it mashes it up with the social web on the side. And so you can use this for learning stuff. I mean, we use the, we use the example democracy and just the stuff that comes up. It's just amazing. Because again, we have 10,000 people writing and about 5,000 of them are writing quite a bit.
metacognitive journal, one thing they learned today, one thing that they still don't understand. And so I just have a standing search for that tag. I haven't tagged their post metacognitive journal. I just subscribe to an RSS. Yep. Page. 